Hey you and welcome to lesson number 28. Today we are going to take a look at two of the most confusing words that people get mixed up. Effect and effect. Effect and effect. They even sound similar but not identical. Now let's see. We are also going to talk about feelings, how to ask someone about their feelings and how to respond uh, about your feelings. And we are going to talk about suggestions, how to make suggestions, and pronunciation of the letter O, and some idioms. So let's get to it. Welcome to lesson 28. Today we have two words that are often confused. Affect and effect. Affect, effect. Even pronunciation is very similar, but not identical. Let's take a look. Many people are confused about the difference between effect and effect. Effect, 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 effect. Before going any further, remember that effect is almost always a verb. Almost always a verb. That's why people get it confused. So, effect is almost always a verb, whereas effect is commonly used as a noun. So effect is a noun, effect is a verb, okay? Almost always. All right, let's start with effect. Effect is often used as a verb, meaning to have an impact on something or to change or to alter, okay? So normally effect used as a verb and it means to have an impact on something or to change something or to alter something. Let's take a look at some um, examples. Nutrition affects our health. Nutrition affects our health. His attitude affected, his attitude affected by the atmosphere in the office. His attitude affected by the atmosphere in the office. Severe flooding affected many regions. Severe flooding affected many regions. The snowstorm affected air traffic. The snowstorm affected air traffic. Public protest. Uh, public. Public protest did not affect the government's decision. Thousands of people will be affected by the proposed changes. All right. Now, effect also has another less used meaning, and that is, and that is to put on a false show off. To put on a false show off. That is a very, uh, or, 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 in an, in, or in another word is pretend. But this is not a very common use. Okay, like for example, she affected indifference, although she was very upset. I mean, she pretended to be indifferent. She pretended like she didn't care, although she was uh, clearly upset. So we use this as, you know, you pretend to do, to pretend, uh, but it's not very common. But normally, effect is used as a verb, and it's used to mean change or alter or uh, impact right that's what we said uh, to have an impact on okay now let's take a look at the other one effect which is uh, commonly used as a noun effect is most often used as a noun meaning result so the effect is the result uh, a consequence or an influence the expressions have an effect on is often used so normally we use uh, effect with the expression to have an effect on have an effect on your diet have an effect on your life have an effect on your relationship and so on all right let's take a look at the first one his words produce the desire of the desired effect uh, here uh, it means results right his words produce the desired effect her warning had no effect on the children her warning had no effect on the children the effect on the economy was disastrous. The effect on the economy was disastrous. 
the medication will not have an immediate effect. So the medication is not going to work right away. You need to take it for a while. The medication is not going to have an immediate effect. Music often has a soothing effect on people. Now, effect can also be used as a verb, meaning to bring about, okay? Or to cause, or to make something happen, uh, to put into operation, or... Okay, this is found in formal context. Let's take a look at an example. The firm affected the transition to computerize accounting last month. Okay, so here it means uh, he put into operation or they, let's take a look at the second example. The bank was requested to affect the transfer of funds immediately. Effects, plural, can also mean personal property or possessions. Let's take a look. Personal effects should be packed separately. Personal effects, so personal property or personal possessions should be packed separately. In most everyday contexts, it is safe to remember that to affect is to have an effect on. Okay, so to affect, which is the verb, is to have an effect on. Just from this example, you would learn that to affect, that means effect is a verb, and effect, that means effect is a noun. Because you don't use articles, a and an, with verbs. We only use them with nouns. So if you just remember this quick sentence, to affect is to have an effect. To affect is to have an effect. So just remember this small sentence and you should be fine. Okay, to affect, that will remind you that effect is a verb. To have an effect will remind you that effect is a noun and that uh, how they are commonly used. All right, now let's express and response to feeling. Asking about feelings. To ask about feelings, you can use the following questions. How are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? You look sad or you look upset. Are you okay? You look sad. You look upset. Are you okay? You seem a little bit distracted. Are you all right? You seem a little bit distracted. Uh, distracted means not focused. You know, you're like spazing out. Not spazzing, spacing, like, you know. You seem a little, okay. Uh, you seem kind of low today. What's wrong? If you seem low, it means you look a little bit depressed. You seem a little blue. What's the matter? You seem a little bit blue today. Blue like gloomy, you know, not happy. What's wrong? What's the matter? Are you okay? Are you all right? Are you happy? Are you angry? We use this with kids because they don't know a lot of vocabularies to express themselves. Are you sad? Is everything okay? Is everything all right? Now let's see about responding. I feel a little bit sad or a little bit happy or a little bit angry. I am a little bit sad, happy or angry. To be honest, I'm a little bit sad, happy or, ang or angry. It's been a difficult day. The thing is that I'm, I, I'm, I'm sad or angry. I am mad at him or I am mad at her. Express and respond to feelings, vocabularies about feelings. So let's learn some vocabularies about feeling. Sad, happy, feel blue. Feel blue is, you know, um, not happy. Feel low or feel down. Depressed, downhearted, angry, cross, annoyed, irritated, mad, furious, vexed, indignant, indig sorry, indignant, uh, irate, seething. The O sound, how do you pronounce the O letter? 
So we know that all vowels have a long form and a short form, a long sound and a short sound, right? But the O has three, okay? That is, it's different than the, than the other vowels. Let's take a look. Three main sounds of the letter O. First one is O, O. John is not hot, O. Molly discovered the plot of the novel in the first chapter. Tom, ah, oh, Tom had an operation on Thursday. So operation, Tom. While jogging, Bob dropped his watch. While jogging, Bob dropped his watch. All right, so it's an ah sound. There is no ah sound in watch. Watch is just watch. Okay, next sound is ah, ah. My mother, ah, mother loves fudge. My, no, no fudge. My mother loves fudge. On Monday, my cousin is coming to brunch. I wonder if the food in the oven, oven is done. I want a lovely new brush. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The last sound is the long vowel O. So we have a very O, uh, O, uh, and O. The O is a long vowel O, and that is no. I won't go home. Judy, please open the show. Your homework is located under your coat. That's a long O, all right? Okay, now let's take a look at some idioms. Get a life. What does that mean? Get a life. It means find something better to do with, a, with your life. It means stop wasting a lot of time in useless or boring or trivial work. Stop wasting your time in something not important. It also means to do something better or act better, act more responsibly. Or it also means to ask someone to mind their own business and, you know, occupy yourself with something useful. Just leave me alone. Go get a life. All right, let's take a look at some examples. You are looking over one you are working over 100 hours a week to get a life okay if somebody works over 100 hour a week they have no social life so this means you literally mean it go get a life you have no life outside your work but he's making a lot of money i mean you have to look at the upside of that you are okay uh where are we one second let me just get the right tool okay why do you always have to interrupt with whatever I do, just get a life and leave me alone. All right. What do you mean not going to the party this week too? You really need to get a life. Okay, because you know, you can't miss two parties in a row. That's just unethical. Go get a life. Get a life, dude. How long are you planning to stay in your room and play games? It means go do something more useful with your life than wasting your life on video games. Nothing wrong with, you, with video games, but do them in moderation. Don't spend all your time on them. All right. Being hardworking is a great thing, but this is as if you are turning into a machine. Seriously, get a life. Why are they so harsh on people with jobs who work a lot? Maybe he enjoys his job. Leave him alone. Maybe he likes what he does. That's why he enjoys working many hours a week. Glenn. Is that Glenn? I need my reading glasses. Jian? Jian? I don't even know how to pronounce his name, to be honest. Let's say Jian. Gian, you need to get a life and stop bullying kids around you. All right, let's take a look at the next idiom. In no time. 
in no time, it means very fast. Something happened very fast in a very short period of time or extremely quickly. All right, let's take a look at some examples. I completed the project in no time at all. If we all work together on the essay, we will be able to complete it on time. Oh, sorry, in no time. We'll be able to complete it in no time. Now that they have built the high-speed rail network, we can get to Shanghai in no time. We will be out of here in no time. I just have to reset the router. So basically, you get the meaning. In no time means very quickly. All right. Take breath away. What does that mean? It means you amaze or astonish uh, somebody. You take their breath away. Okay. You are so impressive. They are so impressed when they see you, they forget to breathe. That is how astonishing you are. Okay, uh, the ring literally took my breath away. There was a monster of a diamond on it. So when she saw the ring, it took her breath away. She couldn't breathe because the diamond on the ring was so huge. The view took my breath away. Top of the mountains have always been my favorite places ever since. The hotel interior will take your breath away. It means it's so beautiful, so nice. It will take your breath away. Every time my wife walks into the room, she takes my breath away. Isn't he a happy husband? Well, to be honest, every time his wife walks into a room, she takes my breath away too. So, The moon is taking my breath away. It's never looked so big in my life. The painting looks so beautiful, or the painting is so beautiful, that it took my breath away. Okay, so you get the meaning. Taking your breath away, it means something is so amazing, so astonishing, that when you see it, you forget to breathe. All right, let's take a look at this part and learn some new uh, phrases. Making a suggestion. Making a suggestion, it means you... Uh, have an idea that you'd like the others to consider you make a suggestion you think that you know whatever you have to say should be heard so how do we do that how do we make a suggestion you can say first way to make a suggestion is subject plus should plus verb it means you should do that or you should go there or he should quit his job or you should get your mom a scarf on her birthday Okay, so this is the first way you can make a suggestion by saying uh, should plus a verb. Now, another common way to give a suggestion or recommendation is could. Uh, subject plus could plus verb. Okay, like we could go to Thailand for our next vacation. They could come to our house for Christmas dinner. We often give more than one option when using... Oh, okay, this is not an example, sorry. Uh, let me just uh, erase this. Okay, so we often give more than one option when we use could. If you want to be healthier, you could try yoga or Pilates. Um, we could go to Europe uh, next vacation or we could go to Africa. He is unhappy at his job, then if he is unhappy at his job, then he could quit or tell his boss directly that he doesn't like his job. So we use could plus a verb or we could use could to give uh, two options, alternative. All right. Number three. Look at the differences between should and could. We can also use some questions that make to make suggestions and recommendations. Okay, so we can say, why don't you? Or why doesn't he? Or why doesn't she? Depending on the subject. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try jiu-jitsu? Uh, why doesn't she break up with her boyfriend? 
If you hate your job, then why don't you quit? So we can give suggestion or recommendation in the form of a question by saying, why don't you? Or we can use how about plus drunk, like uh, how about going back to school or how about this movie or how about getting your mom a necklace, okay? So we can also use the question form. Or we can use, I suggest, I recommend that. This is a direct recommendation or a direct suggestion. In this case, we'll say, I suggest that you get your mom a necklace or I recommend that you focus on, or I, I recommend that she focuses on improving her speaking. Okay, so this will do it for today, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good one.